Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Porky here. You know, don't you? You know. That's why you've tuned in. Today we're joined by Cam from Keithley in West Yorkshire. Over to you, Cam. How are you doing? How are we doing, Matt? All right. What you been on with? Uh, not much. I've just been jotting these questions down for you, mate. You might get straight into it. Yeah, we might as well. Uh, go on, then. Straight in. Right, quest question one, mate. What do we think about David Allen, a.k.a. what do they call him? The Doncaster De La Hoya. What do we think about him walking around in his slippers and his dressing gown? He looks, like, he looks like Vincent Gigante, doesn't he? It's embarrassing, isn't it? Well, the fight looks like it's off now. Yeah. Tom King's just uh, pulled plug on it. Apparently, that Lovejoy's got uh, a contract with him. So, seeing Eddie Earn begging on IFL to Tom King, I mean, Tom King is just like a bad smell, and he won't go away. But if he's got a contract, they'll know that Don King is going to gain an inch to them. And what will happen? Because Don King's not the top dog no more, is he? What will happen no. is Dave will be in a he'll be in a four or a six round. But will he be bothered? I don't think he'll be bothered. They'll probably give him a few quid, and he's been all over the telly this week, so that's all he wants, isn't it? Twitter fighter. Yeah. I mean, Don King's not someone you want to be going to war with, is he? When it comes to contracts and stuff like that. Well, they took Brick Top to court for seven point two million. Yeah. Hey. Mm. Many years ago. Uh, Bricked up, accused him of forging a contract, but I don't know. Could you, or if you were on a jury, would you believe that them two? <laughs> but Bricked up lost, didn't he? But he said he got all his fighters back, but I think he lost in court, didn't he? Mm. So and I think other one with Carl Zaggy, he beat him, didn't he? But he went back, he bank up, went bankrupt, didn't he? Shortly, a couple of days after. So it is what it is, isn't it? But it's boxing, isn't it? It's the wild, wild west, isn't it? If but what my argument with it is this. They've obviously used an agent to make the fight, a matchmaker agent in America. And how it works is the matchmaker in England, Eddie's matchmaker, will ring the American guy. Yeah. And he's obviously not done his checks, has it? So a match room have lost out on flights and hotel and all that testing. And they've now got to go through with it again to get somebody in, but... They'll not want to do that at this stage of the game because it's too late, isn't it? It's Thursday now, isn't it? They'll have mm. to... They'll just get him a knockover in tomorrow. They'll be ringing around today trying to get Dave a knockover. Probably somebody really rank low that he can blow away and look good. If not, he'll probably fight on next show, so on, on, on Joshua's pay-per-view or something. But I, I wouldn't count me chickens if I were Dave getting on Joshua's show because... There's a bit of bad blood there, isn't it? Because he said some stuff about Joshua, didn't he? When he got beat yeah. in New York. So I don't know. And Joshua's got a bit of pull with Macho Man Sky. So it's an interesting one. But am I gutted for Dave? Yeah, I suppose I am. Because I wanted to see it. I like car crashes. I like car crash mm -hmm. TV. But I wanted to see it. after Because it's like... It's a bit like Duckworth's in it in Coronation Street. It's like the light-hearted entertainment part of the of the program, isn't it? Yeah. They've all serious fights, and then everybody's like, "Oh, Dave Allen's out now. Dave Allen's on. Come on, let's all have a laugh." And that's what it basically is, isn't it? Really, it's all a laugh, isn't it? Do you think we might see the? Uh, do you think we might see unfinished business rematch with Dorian Darch this weekend? No, I very much doubt that he's retired, but it. it Look, it's a laugh, but he's created the laugh, hasn't he? Because, yeah. as you just said there, he's walking around in a dressing gown and slippers outside doing interviews outside an hotel. And he's, he's obviously wanting attention it? on him, isn't he? But it's a bit it's cringe, isn't it? It's cringe. For a Donny lad Definitely. as well, doing that. Yeah, it's really embarrassing. Um, so it looks like that fight's off, doesn't it, now? We love hey. Joy. Uh, it looks like it's off, doesn't it, that fight? Yeah. Um, and what, what what else talking to Dave Allen uh, he did an interview the other day and he said that he feels like he's a top 20 25 heavyweight in world what do you think why, about that why how, how's that how is that what's his I don't get that well he's not even top 10 in Britain is he 
I think he's about 11 or 10, isn't he? He's 10 from box rec, but when you look below him, there's Fabio Waldley and Cash Alley. And I think they both beat him, so... Well, he's been offered a Cash Alley fight by Dennis and knocked it back. What happens is, you see, right, the... They get offers, don't they, fighters? But when they work with Eddie Earn, they haven't got a contract with Eddie and He can go anywhere he wants, but yeah, make, he's been making statements and he's saying, well, I want to stay loyal to Matchroom. Well, how have Matchroom stayed loyal to you, giving you 10 grand to fight Louis Ortiz or nine and a half grand to fight Louis Ortiz? That's not loyalty, is it? No. But there isn't any other game in town, really, that fighters feel safe with, even though there is other promoters and you get paid. Eddie Earns convinced them all that if they leave, they can't come back, or there's that fear factor that they can't go back and that they might get left out in cold elsewhere. So the, 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 when you go there, you're kind of like in limbo to if you get any other offers. Do you know what I mean? Well, Eddie Earns didn't do much with uh, he didn't do much with Luis Ortiz, did he, when he had him? Who did he fight? He fought, uh, he fought a guy in Monaco, didn't he? Yeah, that foreign he, uh, he, American guy in Monaco. Yeah, fought. that's that sparring partner. I've, I forgot. Is it Malik Scott? Yeah. And he fought uh, Dave Allen. So that were the two fights that he got with Eddie Hearn. Well, he, he was saying that he's gonna. He were bought as a to keep to protect Joshua. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. He, yeah. he were bought so Joshua didn't have to fight him because he were twenty two and zero. He were knocking everybody out. So they thought, ooh, WBA number one interim champion. Why didn't they try and upgrade him to regular belt? They did with Scott Quigg, but they didn't with Lewis Ortiz, did they? No. Nope. Bought him to keep him out of the way. He doesn't sell tickets, don't speak English. Olymp Olympian, Southport, big puncher, dangerous, bogeyman will keep him out of the way. See where I'm coming from. A bit like well, do you think they'll do, think they'll do the same with uh, Usyk then? I think what will happen with Usyk, he beats Chisora and they keep him away from Joshua. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah. He does a good number on Chisora. They'll not want to put Joshua in him. And Joshua's a bit fragile at the moment, isn't he? Mm. I think. Well, yeah, after that, Andy Ruiz fighting rematch. I mean, wasn't exactly a clinical performance, was it? I mean, he boxed well, didn't he, in rematch, but it's not what you want to see, is it? No, 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 no. It, mate, it's, uh... It looked to me like he was throwing a jab, but he was going backwards when he was throwing it, frightened to death. Every time Ruiz moved a little bit, Josh was jumping back in. Yeah. That's not entertaining. It's not the Joshua that we know. But when you're blowing guys away and you've got the physique to look good, all these casuals buy into it. But really, if Parker would have had any nuts on him, he'd have got him out of there, wouldn't he? Mm. But Joshua... Well, it were the uh, it were referee in that fight. What what were the problem on it in Joseph Parker fight? Shocking, mate. Shocking, wasn't it? So what we're saying then, it's just embarrassing, pure embarrassing from Dave Allen walking around in his in his... In his slippers and his pajamas. Well, it's uh, he stole the show though, didn't he? And that's what it's about. But it's overkill, isn't it? I think so, anyway. Yeah. But if you say anything, Porky, you're a hater. Porky, you're bitter. Porky, you're jealous. No. It's 2020. He's on a pay per view show, and he's looking to get a world ranking. And you're walking around in a dressing gown outside an hotel. Could you imagine? Yui Fury doing that, or, or or Carl Froch, or somebody like that. It's just hey. unprofessional, isn't it? Unprofessional. No, he's just because he's comfortable in that environment now to say and do what you want. A bit like Bellew, he's getting too comfortable, isn't he? Every time I yeah. turn my TV on, look, I've got my TV on here now, look. I've got Tony Bellew on. Tony Bellew on, mate. You know what I mean? The disappearing, disappearing man. man. <laughs> The man that just will not disappear. Look at him. He's all over the place. He's best mates with David. They were best mates all the way through all that palaver a few years ago. Look at him here, hugging and shove. Oh, hey. It's cringe, isn't it? It's, uh, it's everywhere, isn't it, Tony Bellew at the moment? But moving on then from Dave Allen. Moving on. Uh, what do you think about Callum Smith being sat on his sofa like me, like I am here for the last 12 months? Just waiting for Canelo fight. Why? Why has he not got out since since he fought um, John Ryder? Because John Ryder rematch is a dangerous fight, and if he loses, he might not get the Canelo fight. That's a dangerous fight for Callum Smith. That we all saw it happen first time. He clearly lost. Yeah. Now, 
they are saying it were close, but he lost. So if it were close, well, it were a lot closer than the Co- Crawler Lunaras, and they were screaming for a rematch. It were a lot closer than Paul Smith, Arthur Abraham, and they were screaming for a rematch, weren't they? Yep. So. I and think they were Callum's... screaming. They were screaming for a rematch uh, with Carl Frampton, weren't they? When Scott Quigg lost to Carl Frampton. Yeah, but that was close, wasn't it? Close ish. Yeah. Wasn't it? It was close to the Paul Smith one, but they're used to getting their own way, aren't they? But yeah. what's embarrassing for me is Joe Gallagher yet again coming out doing apologies, and every day he keeps yeah. going on about how sorry he is for saying saying it was about race. He meant equality, and he's frustrated, and his fighters are like pressure cookers. And Joe, turn it in, Joe, turn it in. You've made a few quid out of the job. You can't work with brick top. Eddie Hearn's only game in town for you. So get your tongue right up there, Joe. Look at that. You gimp. Yeah, it's embarrassing, isn't it? Proper embarrassing. It's embarrassing for them all. All of them coming out and saying, I want a phone Terry Old Connor had in his hand and Terry's a good guy and Robert Smith does a great job. Are these people so far removed from what's going on? Or are they part of a cult? Well... Callum Smith's coming out now, and Ian is saying he wants a voluntary before end of year, and Liam Smith saying that he's going to retire if he don't get out before end of year. Yeah, they'll not retire. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Go be done. Like uh, I think were it Terry who was saying on your channel the other day, who, who cares if they retire? Who's bothered? I'm not bothered. If Callum Smith and Beefy Smith retired, would they be missed? Not really. A year's a long time in boxing. Are people clamouring for him to fight? No. No. They're only clamouring for people to fight who were selling their arseholes on IFL. Am I right? There's a select people, 15, 20 people that get on IFL and that's all they're bothered about and they're trying to rotate it around that. If you're not in the clique, you're, you're out of it. You, you don't see Yui Fury hanging out at back of people, do you, on IFL? Or Savannah no. Marshall? They don't get as many chances as the rest of them, do they? It's the same people going round and round and round. We're round and round in circles. Do you know when Chisora gets beat at weekend, he'll have 10 yeah. losses. There'll, there'll, there'll be some script being wrote to get him in with White. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> what do you think about 100%, it? 100%, mate. Uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's good. Isn't it? All competition's good, isn't it? Yeah. Um, they're showing Luke Campbell, uh, Garcia fight, which I quite like Luke Campbell. I think he's... Obviously, he's from Yorkshire, isn't he? and uh, I've watched him all the way through, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that fight. But uh, I think it's start of December, mate, or it might be end yeah, of yeah, November. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's good. Any competition is good, but obviously they'll they'll keep increasing the price, won't they? It's starting off at two quid, but it'll probably go up to ten quid within a year, won't it? Yeah. When all said and done, Luke Campbell is no different to Tommy Coyle. He's just got a Commonwealth title, and he's got one of the six level belts of Commonwealth handed to his name. Yeah, he beat Gary Sykes, didn't he? Yeah, like I said, Commonwealth title, Olympic gold medalist. Tommy Coyle's got one of them. Curtis Woodhouse has got a British on, on, on mantelpiece at home and Paul Smith. Yeah. So I don't think Eddie's delivered for Luke Campbell. People can say he ain't a great fighter, but I think he is a great fighter, but I just don't think it's happened for him, has it? He's, well, it comes back to... It comes back to... Sorry, mate. It comes back to what you've been saying recently on your channel that... Fighters now, they're skipping the levels. They're going straight from, not even British level, straight to a you know a world title shot. And it's like, what about British Europe, British Commonwealth European? You know what I mean? Whatever happened to learning your craft? Exactly. Uh, getting proper fights, British level fights. And they're, they're trying to jump the levels. But Luke Campbell, you don't see him hanging out at the back of people, do you, on IFL? Is that because no. his profile's not big? Olympic gold medalist, but because he's... Not on IFL, actually walking around in a dressing gown, or coming out with telling, pouring his heart out about this and that. Is is it is that is that why he don't get chances? I don't know, but he's getting another chance now. But he doesn't seem to be in the mix, does he? No, this he's is not his, part of Click, is he? No, is this is this is second world title fight. But what is he? Thirty three now, isn't he? Yeah, be getting on 33, 34, won't he? Yeah, no, yeah, 34, coming up 34, yeah. So time's knocking on for him now, isn't it? 
It is, mate. He needs to win a world title. I think if he don't win a world title, he's probably underachieved, hasn't he, Luke Campbell? If he don't win a world title this year, I think that'll be it for him. I think that'll yeah. be it. I don't see him beating that Lopez, do you, at 135? No, he's, he's too big and too strong, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, what else? Too big and too he, strong. But... He jot down? I bet it worked Mike Tyson, Roy Jones. No, I'm not, I'm not even interested in that, mate. For me, that's not boxing. That's, uh, you know, that's fantasy stuff. It's... It's yeah. not proper boxing for me, that. But you know, maybe uh, maybe twenty years ago, it might have been a decent fight. But yeah. <clears throat> you know, when Roy Jones were fighting at heavyweight, but it's two thousand and twenty. Like you said, they're in the fifties, so who's yeah. interested in that? But yeah. moving on anyway. Uh, on. What do I saying? <laughs> what do we What do we think about the war of words between Eddie Hearn and Joe Gallagher? Do you think that Joe Gallagher's just trying to get a few quid out of it for his fighters and for himself, or? Do you think he's got a fair point? Uh, there's no gate money, is there? So they're going to have to take less, aren't they? Yeah. Right, that, that's for, we can all see that there's no fans there, can't we? The fact the gate money is probably Eddie Hearn's money on the shows, on these non-pay-per-views, and then to end the sponsorship. The, the money from Sky that they're given for each show, the TV rights, that's probably for fighters on these shows. And he juggles it about. So it makes a difference. So Joe Gallagher stood firm. But now we're seeing a backtrack where they'll take six and eight rounds. He just said he'll take an eight rounder for one of them, one at Smith's in here, or it Liam or yeah. something. Callum uh, Smith, yeah. So, what it, pardon? I think Callum, it was Callum Smith. Callum man, yeah. Johnson, or what it? Callum Johnson, you mean? Or Callum Smith, what it? Oh, no, I think Callum Smith's wanting a voluntary, isn't he? Yeah, it might be Callum Johnson then. Yeah, yeah well, Joe's now changed his tune for the fighters. He wants to get out where they'll, they'll take any. Listen. At this stage at game, they'll fuck a snake, won't they? And he knows yeah. that if he's been put out to pasture by Eddie Hearn, that's him done. All them mm. fighters will leave then and they'll go they'll get somebody else to manage them. Joe might be able to train them, but they'll get new managers. And has Joe broke the contract with his fighters, opening his mouth, coming out with stuff like that? He there might be some legal issues there, you know, and he might his fighters might have said, Here, Joe, what's fucking going on here? So he might yeah. be in a he might be in a tight spot him now because he's if he would have bought a chocolate he'd eat himself wouldn't he? I remember <laughs> seeing him right at sports personality sports personality a year a few years ago with Scott Quigg who, who had a regular belt given him upgraded and then he drew on night didn't he and held belt yeah, up he and not like that, Joe Gallagher turned up with him at sports personality a year and I know people in industry that were wetting the pants at it. It was so cringe. But he was trying to get Quig out there. I understand that, but off at back of a regular interim belt that was, that you were upgraded to, that you got it via an email. And yeah. then on the night when you did fight, a few days later, it were, it were a draw and you held belt up. So I thought that were cringe, but then again, that's Joe, isn't it? Joe, Joe does what's best for Joe. When he's thinking about these fighters... And calling shots about money and who they fight. He's also thinking about himself because he gets a trainer and the manager's cut, doesn't he? He's not yeah. left, you know. So he's thinking about himself, not the as well as the fighters, probably. But to see him grovel, I thought it were quite funny. Because he's not my cup of tea. But he gets he does the best for his fighters and he and he defends them vigorously, but Seeing him grovel. Yeah. Every time I turn my telly on, they've got Joe Gallagher there going, oh, we're out of order, I was sorry, or whatever. Groveler. To see him backtracking like that, and to see Nelson, Earn, and Coogan backtrack on the on of things they've said about Board and Povetkin. And... Yeah, they're all doing it, aren't they? They're all coming out and apologising, but... Terry we know We know what they truly right. think, don't we? Hey. We know what they really think, don't we? Look, we heard what they thought. Eddie Hearn will be embarrassed about that interview with Coogan when he was in his car going on from his dad's Amory and Terry O'Connor. But now he's yeah. changed his tune down. And well, you know, it's what Terry's looking for and that's how they see it. And they're the A-star judges and it is what it is. And we, we all get excited and emotional and blah, blah, blah. And Terry's a good guy. And Robert Smith does a great job. Even Bean were coming out and saying all that. These people are monitor lizards. I keep saying it. Monitor lizards. You know the monitor lizards where the tongue flaps out really quickly. 
And the monitor lizarding you're going to see on Saturday night from Bellew and Colwell will be off the charts. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's cringe, isn't it? It's yeah. cringe, but... What do you think about uh, Dazone coming to England, uh, Cam? Yeah, I think it's a good thing, mate. Like I said, com- any competition's good, isn't it? And I think... I've wanted it over here for a, a few years now, but they've took the time, haven't they? And they've, they've picked the right time to do it. And I think it's a good start. I think that's a good fight, Campbell against Garcia. And I think people will buy that. What do you think about it? I think that, uh, what, the zone? Yeah. I think if they're coming to England and they're going to stick it to Sky, that's good, isn't it? But it'd be interesting to see yeah. what Sky do we had here now, won't it? Whether they've been him. Yeah. Or whether he's going to play one off or other because it's time now, isn't it? Yeah. So. Callum Smith, then, mate. Cal- what, do you think Callum Smith needs to move up to 175 or, or yeah, what? Because he's, yeah. he's, th- he's 30 year old now, isn't he? Yeah. Um, he's got a 78 inch reach and he's six foot three. Not, not even Tony Bell, you had a 78 inch reach, did he? He was six foot three, but he didn't, he had a, I think, 74, 75 inch reach. Didn't Eddie so, say that Callum Smith could go up to like heavyweight cruiser and heavy? His words, wasn't it? A few I'm not years. sure, mate. I'm not sure, but I think he needs to move up, doesn't he, to light heavyweight now? It's, yeah. Surely it's time, isn't it? It kills him to make um, 168, but the mech out he, met, he does it easy. No, 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 no. It kills him, mate. He walks around 185, 190. So, yeah, heavyweight's yeah. about bang on for him. We, we saw that in uh, we saw that in Ryder fight, didn't we, that, he were, that he'd struggle with weight because when it, yeah. when it came to championship rounds, you know, 10, 11, 12, he had no left, did he? John Ryder chopped him down to body, didn't he? He chopped him down like a tree, mate. Yeah. They're not one of them. And, and not that's what you... John Ryder. That's what you got to do with tall fighters like that. you got to chop them down like a tree, haven't you, to body, but... Yeah. It'd be, it'd be embarrassing what Canelo would do to him, but what do we know? But yeah, I think, I think um, he needs to move up, doesn't he? Do you agree yeah. with that? Yeah, I do, yeah. I think he should move up for a simple reason. He's, he's sort of stuck in a rut, isn't he? Plus, I don't yeah. think he's that keen on Billy Joe fight myself. There's some, I just, I just don't know. I think he's struggle against the southpaw. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, I think Billy Joe Saunders beats him. I think Canelo beats him, and uh, I think he could beat John Ryder in a rematch. But we're not going to see it, are we? No, no, we're not. No. So it's pointless talking about it, isn't it? Oof. If we're not going to see it. Pointless, mate. But I'd like to see um, Ryder's don't come out and put or himself out on IFL, does he? No, no, he don't. Mate. Just goes about his business, and him and Callum don't seem to get a mention, do they? And Beefy, Josh Warnick, no. none of them get a mention. Have you noticed the only ones that get a mention are the controversial ones who come out on IFL on social media? Yeah, it's all these. It's all these Southern fighters, isn't it? Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're looking after jobs for boys. That's what it is, mate. Jobs for boys. They're they're coming out with stuff like buatsi has got a ramrod jab, and he's so humble, Adam. And oh, it's it's unbelievable, isn't it? Listen, do you know Buatsi, I'm for the yard, breaking me in half, mate. Yeah. And Callum Johnson and I'm for the arm. Anthony Yard, Callum Johnson are writing him off, in my opinion. After what yeah, I, I saw, I agree with that against that, whatever. That barman, whatever he were called, some mate of Babix. Is he any good? He's a mate of Babix. Oh, oh he must be pound for pound then. <laughs> After seeing that performance and him getting clipped by somebody who's area level, because that's all he wanted one of that guy, really, area level. I thought, yeah, I mean, he wasn't the best, were he? What would have happened if it had been Anthony Yard or Callum Johnson clipping him? And he'd have been going to infirmary, wouldn't he? Yeah, they, they won't take that fight now, will they? Callum Johnson. They won't what? Who that's his team? They won't be taking that fight with Callum Johnson anytime soon, will they? After after think? seeing that, no, not after seeing that, mate. In his last fight, he, he got busted up, didn't he? But did you see his eye? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they offered it a few months ago, didn't they? So I, I don't know why they've all gone quiet on it. Well, all they're coming out with is Buatz is a top prospect. He's, he's one of the best in world prospects, and he's so humble. You sick of you get sick of hearing it, don't you? <laughs> He's so humble. He is quite humble, though. Yeah, Every but... time he throws a punch, mate, it's, he's got a ramrod jab and he's humble. And he's, he's, 
he's different. He's different to what, what is outside the ring to when he gets in the ring. Adam Smith, welcome back to the Blue Ribbon Division. I'm sat next to Joshua Boazzi. Are you still a vegan? <laughs> <laughs> that veg samosa in the bubble was nice, wasn't it, Joshua? Fucking hell, man. Do me a favour, Bean. Cringe, isn't it? Cringe at its worst. But what do you think about the uh, Dubois-Joyce fight not being on pay-per-view? Uh, I think it's not on pay-per-view for a reason, and the reason being that they've decided to put Mike Tyson and Roy Jones on pay-per-view instead, haven't they? And subsidise it with that. So do you think Tyson Fury's fight's not happening now, then? Uh, I'm not sure, mate. I'm not sure about that, but... Yeah, but that's a Frank week Warren. later. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not Mike sure. Mike but... Tyson on 28th and rumoured Tyson Fury Tackham on the 5th. Yeah. That's what Sporting Icon says on his channel. Well, it must be true then. It must be true. They've got a man here who's hiding behind the camera. He says yeah. his sources are telling him it's December 5th. Well, you might not be right there, Sporting. So let's just see how good your sources are. Do you mean Daddy's sauce or HP Tutti Fruity? So, but I yeah. personally don't think it will because 28th of November, pay per view, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones, Matt, and then Tyson Fury against Takam seven days later. That's not no, what you I'll can't be see it. Work, is it? No. So, sporting, I'll be watching to see if you take that video down. Could they not, could they not have done a double pay per view where you get Tyson Fury fighting whoever he's going to fight and then you get that? Mike Tyson, Roy Jones fight on the same night. Could they not have done that? Well, they could have done that on fifth, couldn't they, and gone into America on the same night, couldn't they, from England? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Why didn't they do that? Exactly. So, exciting times ahead. This is why we love this sport so much, Johnny. Rough, turf, rugged, durable, all action, compelling! <laughs> <laughs> that's for you, Andy Patterson. And you've got Frank Warren coming out and saying, it's for the fans. The, the reason this fight isn't on pay-per-view is it's for the fans. For the fans. Well, listen, Frank, let me tell you this. Dubois and Joyce were pay-per-view in March. Am I right? Yep. Right, we all seen the posters. So it wasn't for the fans then, were it, Bricktop? It was for Bricktop. But now that everybody's struggling and it looks like, oh, they're really struggling here and blah, 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 having to stretch a few quid. It's now for the fans. Since fans. When, is, when have these lot ever even give a hoot about the fans, eh? Exactly. Favour. Yeah, he just comes out and just shoulder roll, doesn't he, and just says it's for the fans, but <laughs> we're sick of hearing it. I'm sick of hearing it. Is it doing your head in? It's doing my head in, mate. I used to like Frank, but I just think he's coming out with shit, isn't he, at the moment? Yeah. Um, he's uh, he's, he's a... only got a few fighters left, hasn't he? But I think that Dubois-Joyce fight, I think it's a good fight. And someone's getting iced, aren't they? Yeah, he's got some good kids coming through. Dennis McCann's not bad, is he? Archie Archie Sharp, they're tipped to go all the way, aren't they? Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see how it pans out. But like I said on many times in these videos, greed reaches inside to the core of people and makes you do strange things like David A. I keep seeing him on social media the last few days prostituting himself and prostituting Chisora as the second coming of Ernie Shavers. And it's embarrassing to watch considering Derek Chisora is not beat Anybody of he's only beat C class, and he really his what best is win is Takam. Takam, right? He's C class, isn't he? In a life and death, life and death with Takam, and we're losing every round till they pulled it out at bag C stroke halfway to B, C yeah. minor, C plus, but he's not a B plus, or you could C plus or a B minus Takam. That's his best win. He's never won a world title. So that's his best win. He's a European level fighter. And yeah. he's going in with a guy who's an elite cruiserweight stepping up. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. But to see Tony Bell, you on here now. He's on here now. He's all over this Again. conference. Yeah, he's on here now saying 
that Del, Del Boy beats Usek. And he said something about his feet, didn't he, on social media today, that his feet are not that good or something. We're, we're, listen, we all know what happened to Tony Bellew, don't we, when he fought Usek. It was ice, ice, baby. You got ice, ice big time. Chalk ice. Big time. Adonis Stevenson iced him big time. They've got Tony Bellew on here giving advice how to fight Southpaws when two of them knocked him out. Yeah. Two of them put him to sleep. He turned his back on who say on Stevenson in Canada, didn't he? But all of a sudden, well, I think he's. Um, him, eh? I think he's got a conflict of interest working for Sky this weekend because he's best mates with Derek Chisora, isn't he? Best mates with Derek Chisora. And so is fine. that not a conflict of interest? Of course it is. But Adam Smith's got a conflict of interest as the commentator, hasn't he? Adam Smith, the head of Sky, they've got an exclusive deal with Matchroom. So basically, they're all as one big family. And they've got Adam Smith commentating. It's, you, it's, it's bad, mate, honestly. It's bad. But then again, you have Gary Neville commentating on Man United matches, don't you? But he doesn't uh, get any... He, he's fair, isn't he, Neville? Yeah. Red yeah. Nev. He's fair. He's not biased, and I, I think that's good. I think I think if they call it as they see it, because they can afford to footballers, but this lot here, they're calling it for the mates, and it's wrong. Like I said, it's rotten to the core from the board to Sky to the promoters. It's a cesspit, and nobody's saying a word on it, this channel. All they want to say should hold your heads in shame. Hang them in shame for the simple reason You've got access, but you're not asking right questions. You're part of the problem as well. Am I right? We know I'm right. Yeah, but it's the blue ribbon division, Porky, and uh, it's compelling. Well, and it's going to be like it's going to be like Barrera and Morales. Is what? It's going to be like Barrera and Morales. That's what it comes out with, isn't it? Is that that's what he said about Shannon Courtney against that uh, Rachel Bald and it's like Barrera and Mali toe to toe, Matt. It's toe to toe. What about Macklin when Joshua fight? He's on shaky legs, Adam. His legs are shaky. <laughs> Brilliant. Macklin were really loving that, really. He were loving that, trust me. You reckon? Yeah, but Usek's the man for me, and I think he's probably danger man in division for all of them. Peter Fury really rates Usek, you know, he keeps saying to me that. He's really good, that also, you know, really, really good. Technically, out of this world. Well, he's knocking on a bit now, isn't he? Yeah, I think he's, uh, is he 33, 34? Well, look, they keep going on about the Usyk, as a minute off anybody, look. He's beat Baterbia twice and he's had full-on punches in face off him. Beat Baterbia twice in amateurs. And yeah. Baterbia were, I think, if you go on, on, on amateur rankings or the Wikipedia, you can see he beat Baterbia twice. He is not to be messed about with him. But Terby beat Kobolev twice. And they're, like, they're all tough people. The training snow out there, you know. Have you seen his training camp where he sleeps on straw outside? Who oh, say? <laughs> the proper animals, aren't they? You know what I mean? Yeah. Proper animals. But what else did you want to talk about? Well, the next question is, why are people buying into this Watch's aura? Um because he's got nine. We all know that he's got nine losses. This is obviously going to be his tenth loss. Mm. Uh, but the guy is selling it. The guy that's selling him, David A. He fought injured three times on Sky Sports box office, didn't he? Yeah. We don't believe a word he says. But you know this war thing. That yeah. What they're doing, the training, the humans' minds. Right? I know people say, "Porky, your channel's turned into a trooper channel. It's about conspiracies." No, David A. is <laughs> walking around with his outfits on and they're on IFL and Sky Sports Boxing Social doing interviews behind the gloves and it says on these clothes War Chisora so when you see yeah. it you're thinking oh it's you, you, you're already you, you're already a captive audience you're thinking about wars aren't you now we saw Derek Chisora when he brung it against Dylan White he, he wanted a war then didn't he he went out on his back so does he bring it yeah but personally when he's ever stepped up he's been found wanting in my opinion Tyson Fury took him to school, didn't he? Twice. Twice. Anytime he's fought someone with a good jab, Russ, Kubrat Pulev, Tyson Fury, uh, pretty much every every yeah, every yeah guy that he's lost to has either had good uh, a good jab or good movement. Well, Usyk's got both, and he's a southpaw. Elenius did him as well, though, didn't he? Elenius beat him. Close fight, wasn't it? But he's, he's beat him, hasn't he? Um, 
he's got that many losses. I can't even think who he's lost to, but pretty much I went on his record the other day and every, pretty much every fighter that he's lost to has had a good jab. And like I said, Usyk's got a good jab, good movement, and he's a southpaw. He's a nightmare, isn't he? How long is it since Vitaly Klitschko beat him? Yeah, Vitaly beat him, didn't he? Right. Uh, what was it, 2000 and... 2012, were it? 11, yeah. So, he had life beat out him that night, didn't he? Oh, yeah. And Fury, Fury punched him upside down, didn't he? 2013, were it? 2014, something like that. Might have been yep. 2014. So, and he's still, we're still talking about him, and he's, had, he's on his second pay-per-view this week. I'm sick of it. It's crazy. The Frotch only had three. Yeah. My head in, man. It does yeah, sick to death of it, are we? Yeah, well, I'm I'm close to uh, doing an epic, an epic rant, and then just knocking on head for a bit. I think because it's just yeah. it's time consuming for me. This and I can be doing other things. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I like to have an hand on approach. Me three years up, end of November with this, and I'm going to have a look at it then. So we're going to see. We'll see where we're at. We'll have we'll have a uh, a good old chat about it because. It, it looks to me like it's going down pan. The product's watered down. I, was, I, know, I know we always revert back to Carl Frotch fights, but we had Frotch Boutte, didn't we? Non-pay-per-view yeah. in 2012. Yeah. 2020, we've got Eggington Cheeseman non-pay-per-view. That, to me, yeah. is... That's it's a big difference. It's like, it's like Robinson's... Uh, it's like Robinson's dilute, isn't it? Diluted. Yeah. Yeah, basically yeah. it. But everybody's telling us boxing's buzzing. Boxing hasn't been buzzing since Joshua uh, against Klitschko at Wembley. And he was pushing 42-year-old, 18-month on settee, after a schooling off the Gypsy King. Am I right? You're right. And when you look at Joshua's record... Fight, in his 69th fight, life and death. And everybody had him winning up to the round he got knocked out in. Yeah. But judges didn't, because they were his judges, weren't they? But... It's yeah. craziness what's going on and something needs to happen. So what other questions we've got? Thoughts on Johnny Nelson saying that Deontay Wilder would never fight again. Did he, did he not say that about Tyson Fury? Listen, do you know some of the stuff Johnny Nelson comes out with, mate? I'm, I'm going to read you some of the stuff that Johnny comes out with. Go on, then. You're going you're gonna to howl here at this, right? What's he been saying, Russ? Listen to this. Bellew is technically better than Usyk. That's one of them, isn't it? That's one of them. Let me tell you the rest, because you're trying to steal me, uh, trying to steal the show. It's Porky show, you know. <laughs> Porky's channel, kid. Get in line. Right, here we are. Uh, uh, Anthony Joshua will knock Vladimir at Klitschko out and retire him. Johnny Nelson. Yeah. It was life and death, though, wasn't it? Right. We've got Usek. He's beatable, but he's fighting Chisora with nine losses. Bellew is technically better than... U oh, Johnny Nelson says... So we've got Usek. He, he's beatable. He's beatable. Del Boy can beat him, but he's got nine losses. Fury will never fight again at Joshua Poole F1 press conference. That's what he said. Fury will never fight again. That's when Joshua and Fury should have fought. Bellew is technically better than Usek. We heard that one. Tackham is Holyfield and George Foreman rolled into one. Conor McGregor beats Mayweather down the straight because of fitness. <laughs> Joshua wow. beat Vladimir by KO. And then six days later on IFL, he said Vladimir is going to stop Joshua. Uh, that's basically oh so we've got who's a, yeah yeah basically just things like that some of the madness he comes out when Wilder's retiring look I know somebody who trains one of Dennis's fighters and he's very good friends with Wilder speaks to him all the time Richard Towers and yeah don't tell you Wilder's not retiring so why is Johnny coming out saying that that they're coming out they're coming out with these one-liners it's fake news. Fake news, so people jump on the Joshua Fury bandwagon. No, look, Tyson Fury probably beats Wilder at rematch, but there's that chance. Wilder's probably the only guy out there that's got a chance of beating Fury because he's got the equaliser, hasn't he? He's already, he's already yeah. him twice. 
So they're not going to risk millions and millions of pounds by fighting wireless. So I think they're looking for a way out. Not looking for a way out because I don't think Tyson's written of him, but I just think that they don't want to fight Wilder because it's a risky fight. It, it, it could derail you at any minute, so why risk it when you could go with Joshua? It was a bit fragile at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. So it is, it is what it is, isn't it? But Wilder, Wilder's not retired. I mean, they're talking rubbish. They're told what to put out. The play and everybody, look, this is what they do. Look, you've just seen A and... I just showed you that A and Bell you. Yeah. And, uh, they were hated enemy. Look, the laughing all weight at bank. That's what these people do. They get money out at job and then they have a laugh. They laugh at fans. Look at them mugs buying that. They fell for it. You know the table one? Do you believe, right? You know that table when Chisora flipped that up? Did you see Dylan White move? He didn't he even flinch today. Like that, didn't he? Grinning. Yeah. It's all put up jobs. Put up jobs. WWE, yeah. we're gum shields. It's getting that way, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's going down pan, mate, and it's doing my head in. All these pay-per-views, it's pure greed. The Mike Tyson one and Roy Jones was, was tipped me over edge this morning. Well, it was yesterday when it come through last night, but tipped me over yeah. edge this morning. I'm thinking, well, what on earth's going on here? Mike Tyson were born in, in Year England won't well cup one here somewhere. Something like sure that, that time. Yeah, England. He's in his 50s, isn't he? He's 54, Mike Tyson, isn't he? Other one's 55, isn't he? Or is he 51? They're in the 50s, aren't they? 50 yeah. odd year old men fighting. But, and, and they've had the day, haven't they? Do you know what I mean? It's not like it's going to be a, a white collar fight, is it? They're, they're going to make millions out of the job, aren't they? And that's what's wrong about it. Yeah. What's wrong about it? But it is what it is. Isn't it? It's, so, so what we're saying about Johnny Nelson then, cringe or company man, or both? Both. Or just he idiot. He knows what, and an idiot. Look, Johnny, I know you're watching. Stop being a clown. All right. Stop being a clown, Johnny. Working yourself up as this big media guy. You're a fake. You've only got a job at Sky because you're black. That's the bottom line, basically. That's the bottom line. That's the only reason he's got a job at Sky. People can say, fuck, are you being arsed? No, he was only re- that's the only reason he got the job. That's the only reason. But nobody dare say out there, they. So we've got to tell it straight as we see it, haven't we? you got to do. you got to do. What's your, uh, what's your thoughts on Tony Bellew, the disappearing man? He seems to be in every single matchroom bubble, doesn't he? He seems to be working on every single fight. But where's Carl Froch and where's Paul Smith? Carl Froch is not on the ringside this Saturday. He's in the studio. Uh, well, you tell me. It looks like uh, Carl's not a company man, is he? He goes against Green. Definitely he not. Keen. Yeah. But he, can, he doesn't need to be like them lot, does he? He's all right in his set up for life. Point I want to make is this on that. Tony Bellew can't leave it alone. Can't leave it alone. He was no. supposed to be disappearing and gears all a break from him, wasn't he, after them three pay-per-views on trial? Two David A ones and... Well, that's what he said. He said, you won't see me. Um, you know, he said, you're not going to see me around and I'll disappear and we're seeing him every week, aren't we? Tony, I know you're watching. Will you piss off? <laughs> Good fighter, Tony Bell, you want it, but you, see, you get sick of seeing him. Who's his best three wins? Uh, his best three wins, you David A, second fight, because first fight, you can't really count first fight, can you? Because, no. you know, he was just... He was getting beat. He was a right, he was a right mess, what a David A for first fight. But he was getting beat by a one-legged man. Masternak, European level, and Makabu, probably. Well, he, he's mm-hmm. he's world champion now, isn't he, Makabu? But he's they're European, his best three wins. He's European level, though, isn't he? Yeah, he's not a, a real world level elite fighter, is he? So Tony Bellew's best three wins are Hey Two, yeah, Macabo, and yeah. Cleverly. Yeah, uh, no, no, not Cleverly. Um, Masternak. Masternak. Because he dragged Cleverly up to cruiserweight, and Cleverly, he wasn't even a big light heavyweight, were he? Really? Started out as a light middle. Exactly. So that's not a great win, is it? Let's be honest. No. But anyway. Next question, uh, next question, Porky. Going back to Deontay Wilder, 
Um, do you think he'll fight again? Um, yeah, I do, yeah. I do, yeah. Do you think he ducked that third fight with Tyson Fury? No, I don't. He's not like that. No? No. I don't think he is. I think he might have something up his sleeve. Might be training hard. He's surrounded by intelligent people. Uh, Shelley Finkel, Al Heyman and that. I don't just think they're going to just have a contract drawn up so that it runs out and that that Fury can just do what he wants. I think there's something going on behind the scenes and you might see some, a few legal letters popped off. Yeah. Because he's not going to lose his world title and not have, it, not have a guaranteed rematch, is he? Well, Tyson Fury doesn't seem to like immediate rematches. I mean, John McDermott, that wasn't an immediate rematch, was it? No. Derek Chisora, that weren't an immediate rematch. No. Uh, Klitschko, he pulled out of the immediate rematch. And who was the other one? Wilder, that wasn't an immediate rematch either, was it? No. So, I'm just putting that out there. Yeah. Something to think about, isn't it? Yeah, well, like I said, I, I've already said it in an earlier video. We're, we're, we're all guessing, aren't we? But I just think, reading between the lines, that there's something going on behind the scenes. Them Americans are not going to let that belt come to England and, and not have a rematch and it be lying down. That Wilder will be dragged to that ring kicking and screaming by the powers that be, I can assure you, mate. Mm, be interesting to see what what happens. Let's watch it unfold like an onion. Yeah, let's see what happens, mate. Uh, have you had any bets this weekend for? Yeah, I'm having a fights. bet on Savannah Marshall, Dave Allen, and Usyk. Although Dave Allen one might not be no good now, and Usyk all to win by KO, all by knockout. Accumulator, yeah. Trying to I've just it. had that. Um, I've just had a bet on Usyk to win. Round seven to twelve. I think he definitely stops his R do. Yeah. It might be it might stop it might not be a knockout, it might stop him on his stool or mm. it might be a match room stoppage. But I think he, he definitely Dora gets one in on Usek, it could be a, a uh, could be an Ian John Lewis job, couldn't it? Stoppage. <laughs> do you think Adam Smith will be shouting, Lift off for Usek? Probably, yeah. Probably, yeah. Fireworks, Matt in the house tonight. Ramrod jab. He's so humble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bean quotes. What's your thoughts on um this is my last question, this Russ. What's your thoughts on Eddie Hearn saying that once you leave him, you can't go back? Uh well, did Josh Pointer not leave him? Yeah, and went back. Did Lee Selby not leave him? He's fighting this weekend, isn't he? Yeah, but what you've got to understand is Josh Warrington sells arenas out. Kel Brooks at the end of his career and he's been hard work, can he, to motivate. Do you know what I mean? And when you're not pull, piling tickets up and world title belts, he's no use to him. Josh Warrington ticks both boxes, doesn't he? Got a world title, yeah. unbeaten, still in his 20s, sells tickets. So of course you were going to take him back. Do you but think Kel that? Do you think Eddie Hearn did a good job with Josh Warren? No, he didn't deliver him a world title. He didn't get him the big fights, did he? He didn't deliver him a world title. He wanted to keep milking that, milking him at Leeds. He didn't deliver Callum Smith a mm. world title. Sowland's got it, and Billy Joe Saunders has got two world titles and a middle and super middle. Eddie didn't get yeah. him. Then Frank did. Mm. So, and have you noticed that are all them lot? There's only Warrington that sells tickets. Billy doesn't sell tickets, does he? He's, a, he's like, he has to go away, doesn't he, all the time? Yeah. Uh, Callum Smith doesn't sell tickets. And what has he done for BP Smith? He left Frank Warren, went to Eddie. What's Beefy done? Had a fight with Sam Eggington, his sparring partner. Yeah, you, we've got you a fight. You're headlining on Sky. Who is it, Eddie? Your sparring partner. Oh, thanks, Eddie. Yes, please. It's like Bartbusters, isn't it? Yes, please, Bob. Oh, yes, please, Eddie. Yeah, you're going to be fighting against Scrambled Eggington. Going to be what? Well, I said to him, right, you're going to be fighting against Scrambled Eggington. Yeah, Scrambled Eggington. I'd like to see Eggington against Cheeseman again. I mean, look, look at the state of them, 24 and 26, and the, the, both the brains are scrambled, aren't they? Dave Allen, 28. No, I'm talking yeah. like Rudy Bosun. You know what I mean? 
does what it says on yeah. So, I, I agree with you. I think that if, if Josh Warrington had, had stayed with Eddie Hearn and not gone to Frank Warren, I think he'd have just kept him ticking over. He'd be about 35 and 0, having fought nobody. Wanna... They'd have been milking that at Leeds where they wanted a world title, didn't they? They got a world title, yeah. they defend it, and they've done well. They've done, they've done their own thing. They'll not get carte blanche off Eddie and Josh Warrington's team because they left, didn't they, and came back. Same with yeah. Kel Brook. Johnny Nelson's come out now, aren't he, trying to. I had a dig at Johnny Nelson on here today, saying, Where were Johnny Nelson helping Kel Brook get on Sky? Johnny's come out on it today, straight away with a video. Oh, uh, uh, Kel had worked with Eddie, you know, and Eddie had worked with Kel because it's business. They don't, they don't have to like each other. Johnny, you groveling piece of shit. Get your tongue out my arsehole. You know you let Kel Brook down when the push come to the push. Johnny Nelson, you're wrong I think they all let Kel Brook down. I think that I think that Kel Brook made a mistake of thinking that Eddie Emery's best mate, but also I think he got let down big time by everyone around him, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah. Bad listen, you take a few wrong turnings in boxing, whether it be it's usually the people around you. Look, boxers are all pretty dedicated people from what, I, from what I've seen, most of them. Yeah. But it's who you have around you. If you've got drug dealers around you, that's shit, in it? And shit leaves stains. If you've got people in your ear all that's shit, and that leaves stains. It's all about who you've got around you. If you've got good people around you, you're all right. You've even got to watch your own family in boxing because they'll rip you off as look at you. You've got... There's, there's nobody... Look, a boxer should manage himself after three years when you're allowed to buy the boxing board of control rules. Get rid yeah. of these managers and look after your own career, make your own decisions, then it falls with you. You don't need everybody making your decisions for you and in your ear rolling up your arsehole. It's no good. That's why I've got a lot of respect for David A. Porky because I know he's a, he could sell sand to Arabs, couldn't he? But at the end of the day, he managed himself, didn't he? Yeah. And he went from promoter to promoter. He did what was best for him, and I, I respect that. But at the same time, he's full of shit, isn't he? Look, he's been screaming it from rooftops. You know when Chisora gets beat on Saturday, you know what he's going to say? Derek needs the vibe of the crowd to motivate him. So they've already got yeah. the, 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 the excuses made, and then they're going to scream for Dylan White trilogy. But if Dylan beats Povetkin, they'll have to take short end up money. That's what yeah, they'll be asking. Uh, they'll be asking f to fight the loser of that Povetkin White rematch, will they? There you go. Yeah, so they're still in mix on that, and that'll be a pay per view as well. You watch. Yeah. Chisora against White or Chisora Povetkin pay per view. And Usek, that's one little foursome now because Joshua's going to be busy with Fury next year, so they say, don't they? So that little foursome yep. there, they're going to fight each other, and whoever loses in the rematch, they'll drop down and they'll fight the next lot coming up. But none of them are calling out Ergafik or Magadoff, are they? Them big no. punchers. No, the, nobody's mentioning them bogeymen, are they? Or Caballel. I think Usyk, Dubois and Hergovic, they're like the they're the three people that you need to watch out for, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. In everweight division. But I think they'll be avoided. I, I can't I don't think that Usyk will fight for a a belt under Matchroom. Oh, yeah. No. I think he'll, he'll keep him away from Joshua and he'll just keep putting him in there with, you know, these top 10 guys like Rivas and uh, Pavetkin, people like that. Mm. I don't think he'll fight for a world title, but I might be wrong. But what do you think? I don't know. It's going to be interesting, isn't it? Uh, I think that who wants to see Rivas, though? Rivas, well, who wants to see him? Well, we've already seen him, haven't we? And he got beat. There's a, look, at this stage of the game, right, there's that many fighters that attack any offer to fight. Dave Allen will get a fight tonight, tonight or tomorrow. They'll take any fight, these people, any fight whatsoever to get earning because they're parked up, aren't they? These kids are parked up. They're not doing anything. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So it is what it is. Yeah, that's it for my questions, mate. No I've, problem. Uh... Well, listen, it's been nice to have you on. Is this the first time you've been on Zoom with me, yeah? First time I've been on Zoom, mate, but I came on I came on about six months ago, didn't I, over at phone, but I, I think you're in office. Yeah, no, we've yeah. gone big time now with Zoom. Oh, definitely. 
Upgrading, aren't you? Upgrading, kid. Upgrading. So, all right. Then we'll listen. Your, your, cha- your channel will be pay per view soon, won't it? Pay per view. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> you reckon you think we should start charging them? There's squeal like pigs if we charged them, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah. But uh, Definitely. we're not at that stage to be charging people yet. Just before I go, I'm going to ask you something else, actually. I've just remembered. Um, what, what's happening with Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn? What's, what, what, what is happening? They were supposed to be meeting a few weeks ago. And Eddie Hearn came down with coronavirus. Fair enough. It's just gone quiet, hasn't it? Well, look, Frank Warren... Looked to me like you're in a tight spot. So we put 10 offers out. There's 10, your 10 fighters against mine. Eddie went, I'll see you when I get back off my holiday, which were paying lip service to him. But then the next ref is saying, why should I help Warren? Look, I called it straight away. They're not going to work together. They've done three fights in 10 and a half year, right? So what, what's that? 120, 126 months, they've done three fights. Eddie's been a promoter over 10 years now. 100 and 20 odd month, three fights. If it were four fights a year, it'd be 42 fights, wouldn't it? So, yeah. where's the other 39 fights we've been robbed of? They're not going to work together. But one of them wants to dominate, and there's that much bad blood of it years and legal stuff and that. Look, they're not going to work together. Eddie's not going to allow it. Frank would, because he's on back foot in here. But if Boot were on the other foot, Frank wouldn't want to work with Eddie, would he? If he were, if he were, no. The- so, but you actually called it, didn't you, a few weeks ago? You called it. You said that that meeting. See through him. You said, you said that meeting won't happen, and it didn't, did it? So I remember right. when I first started with Dennis, I said, I think they should work together, them, and stop this cold war. He said, they'll never work together. There's too much hatred. Yeah. You were right, wasn't he? You were right. And I thought, oh, and I logged it in my head, and I, and I studied them. I read all magazines, all websites, every interview, watch it all, and I thought, no. And that's just my opinion. I don't think they will. I think there's too much... So much stuff going on behind scenes. It's I'm not I'm gonna go into it, but there's it's proper bad hate between them. It's oh yeah. it's awful. And and it it won't happen. And Frank, who, who knows? Frank might feel the same towards Eddie, he probably didn't want to work with him, but I don't know. He was the one who reached out and took a lot of stick for it. So we have to give Frank Warren credit for that because some of them fights were pretty tasty, weren't they? Well, there's loads, isn't there? There's loads of fights that they could make between them, but Yard against Johnson, yard against Boatsy. I mean, yeah. why don't you put Boatsy in with Johnson and get it on? Well, they should do. Yes. You know, they're both under the same stable, aren't they? So I don't see why not. Why don't they put Joe Joyce in with uh, Dylan White? Why not? Dubois. Dubois in with Dylan White. Dylan White won't want to go near them because if he gets no. beat against them, where does he go? He got beat against the Babby Dubois. Or beat against somebody who's a bit older than him in Joyce. He don't go anywhere. So, no, he'd rather lose to somebody like Povetkin. Yeah, because then he can say, oh, I've lost to a, a goal, former world a champion. Former world champion. Yeah. So, all right then, mate. Nice one, mate. Well, listen, thanks for coming on, Cam. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. No uh, worries, mate. I'll have you on again. All right. You take care, nice mate. To speak to Cheers. You. you too, Bye. mate. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, that was Cam from West Yorkshire. Nice to have him on. Tired me today, really shattered. We're towing a bit towards the end of that interview, but it was a good interview, good questions. I feel like we're going uh, over the same sort of stuff. You know, you see these people do interviews and they're going on about the same stuff. I feel like I'm going, I'm going down that road now. Uh, so I need to mix it up a bit. I'll mix it up a bit in the next few days. I'm a bit, I'm my biggest critic. So, yeah, I think I'm going over the same old crap. Might need to, to, to have a change. Might need to get back in the hot seat Monday and start doing some proper bean videos. So, thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing it amongst your pals. Liking it and leaving a nice comment. If you don't want to leave a nice comment, Leave a nasty one as well because we love comments. We like a good laugh here at Porky's. Okay, peace out. Shout out Innovation Alloys, South Yorkshire Packaging, Top Boys.